Uh, 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 if only there was some invention that could hold arrows for you. Hi guys, this is New Sensei, and as you can see, today we're talking about quivers. Quivers are very useful objects. Now, many people will start archery without getting a quiver, and this may be because you're a cutting cost or perhaps the kit that you bought your bow with didn't come with a quiver. So getting one is a bit of a luxury for some people, but it is actually quite an important accessory and there are many different types. And while buying a quiver may seem simple, there are a few differences and a few different kinds that you should look at. So today we'll examine different types of quivers and why you might go for one more than another. Firstly, one type of quiver that people don't think about is the bow mounted quiver. These quivers, as you can see, attach directly onto the bow itself. While they may look clumsy, they're actually very convenient. Bow quivers work by inserting the arrows into a foam pad with additional clips to hold the shafts in place. This allows you to carry your bow and ammunition together. This should give you quick and easy access to your arrows without having to carry them in a separate quiver. The main advantage, apart from having all your arrows in one place, is that the bow quiver is quiet. Because the shafts are held in place, they don't move. Wearable quivers will create noise when the arrows rattle, so if you're stalking animals in the woods, this may be an important factor. There are, of course, several disadvantages. The quiver does add weight to the bow. This shouldn't be significant, but this can be a minor annoyance if you prefer a clean and simple bow. You also need a bow that has the bushings to screw the quiver on. Finally, these quivers have limited capacity. You're not going to carry more than 6 arrows at a time. While this is sufficient for a walk in the woods, you'll want more arrows if you're practicing at home or at the range. Bow mounted quivers are therefore a specialized quiver for field and hunting. They often come packaged with compound hunting bows and can be bought for traditional bows. You almost never see these on the shooting line. Next you have the good old back quiver. These are very popular for those who've seen way too many movies and TV shows, but in reality they're pretty comfortable and they look really cool. The back quiver, as the name would suggest, is placed on your back, so the arrows are positioned just above your shoulder. To use the back quiver, you reach around your shoulder, you pull an arrow like that, and then you knock and you shoot. You pull the next one, knock and shoot, and so on. This does take some practice, but over time it does become instinctive. Advantages to back quivers, they're adjustable and they're comfortable. You don't really notice that you're wearing it. It's there, but you walk around freely, there's nothing dangling from your hip, so it's a compact bow which doesn't get in the way. This makes it quite popular in the field. You can carry dozens of arrows and go stumping or shooting 3D or shooting field, and it's just really convenient. So that's the main advantage. I also don't want to understate that the emotion of using a back quiver does look pretty cool. 
I know kids love this. All the favorite characters will pull out the arrows and go pew pew and so on. So it is pretty uh, fun to use. Uh, and it does have that action movie feel. So that is one legitimate reason why you might veer towards a back quiver. Also, these tend to be high capacity. Uh, most quivers are, but the back quivers are basically just big round tubes. So you can fit in dozens of arrows and not really be uh, encumbered by the extra weight. Some downsides, uh, it does take some time to get used to reaching over and pulling arrows. Uh, I know the beginners who use back quivers might be reaching towards like empty air and trying to find the, uh, the arrows. But like I said, after you get used to it, it does become quite instinctive to reach and touch the arrows. Um, another disadvantage is that if you use short arrows or you're a short person like me, then you find that there isn't enough clearance to grab the arrows more instinctively. Uh, my arrows are quite short, so you have to kind of reach further back to grip it. There are ways to work around that. Um, some people will grab the shaft and pull it from there, but you can actually tap the, uh, the arrow, yank it out like that, and then pull the rest out. So that way you can use a back quiver with shorter arms and shorter arrows. On that note, uh, again, um, the act of putting the arrows back into the tube can be instinctive, but again, many people will take some time to get used to dropping the arrows in. Um, and you might notice that will happen for your first few attempts. I think the biggest downside to the back quiver is the extra motion needed to reach around to grab an arrow. It's not much, but considering it's quite a large motion to grab an arrow, knock and shoot, grab an arrow, reaching around, knock and shoot. If you're doing this hundreds of times in a day, then this does become quite tiring. It's, un it's a low energy movement but that is movement in your shooting arm and you will get tired. I think this is the main reason why you don't often see this in clubs or on the shooting line because it's just easier to pull arrows from your side or from your hip than to pull it from behind your back. So yeah, that extra fatigue is a factor. That's why I think most people prefer this for field um, or walking around the woods and not so much shooting on the target line. I mean, just imagine, you're in a competition, you've done 143 arrows, you've got one more to go, and you're just trying to reach for it, you're tired, you pull it out, and it kind of plays with you sometimes. It gets to you know, your head, and um, you sometimes just wish you had an easier quiver to use. And so we come to the hip quiver. This is probably the most popular and common type of quiver it's quite simple, you wear it on a belt, it sits along your hip, and you put arrows inside. This is very easy to use, and probably the one that will come with your bow kit when you buy your first bow. There's nothing really complex about this. Uh, often these, the hip quivers have multiple compartments or multiple tubes, so you can separate your arrows according to whatever system you have. Using a hip quiver is the easiest thing you can do. The arrows are right here. You pull them out and that's it. Just one simple effortless motion. So the advantage of a hip quiver is that, as I said earlier, it's the easiest one to use. All your arrows are right here, so it requires the least amount of effort to pull an arrow out.
Another clear advantage is that you can literally see the arrows in your quiver. This is good for a couple of reasons. One, you can see how many you have remaining. So you don't have to guess or count or feel. You can see, oh, I've got 12 left. Oh, I've got six left. So that makes it user friendly. Additionally, because you can see the arrows, if you are marking your arrows in any way, like numbering them and shooting them in a particular order, then you can actually see uh, which arrows you are shooting, as well as any damage they may have visually. So if I see a broken knock or torn fletching, I will probably detect it before I pull it out. Um, and considering that the hip quivers normally come in multiple compartments, I normally keep my broken arrows in the last slot so I don't accidentally shoot one. The main disadvantage of a hip quiver is that the arrows stick out forwards. The fact that they protrude outwards means that you can bump into things. Uh, you can bump into uh, doorways, you can bump equipment, you can accidentally poke your fellow archers in the bum. Uh, and I've done it myself in the competition. So you have to be kind of careful with how you carry this quiver. Um, and it might be a safety issue in some places. I know in some clubs, uh, there is a rule where you can't bring your quiver into the clubhouse. And this is actually the main reason why too many things get hit or knocked over because people are wearing their hip quivers indoors. So yeah, it, it can be a little clumsy to carry around. Additionally, uh, some hip quivers can be quite awkward. They can flap around on your leg. Uh, the better ones are more heavy and they, they don't do that, but the cheaper ones will tend to do so. Uh, apart from that, the main reason why you see this primarily on the shooting line is convenience. The fact that the arrows are here, you pull them out to shoot, you put them back in when you're done. These tend to be less common in the field because just the, the, the positioning of the quiver and its clanginess makes it a little awkward in the woods. Now, there's one more kind of quiver that confuses people. This is a field quiver. It's basically a hip quiver which points in the other direction. No, this is not a left-handed quiver that I'm wearing on my right side. Field quivers are purpose designed so that the arrows are pointing away from you. Using a field quiver can be a little counterintuitive if you're used to a regular hip quiver. I'm used to one so I still grab where the arrow should be sometimes, but the arrow's are positioned behind your arm. So you pull it out by extracting it from the waist, pulling it out, and then you knock the arrow. Uh, because I tend to knock closer towards the veins, um, I pull them out here, I kind of poke it against myself, run my fingers down, and that's my grip.
The main advantage of the field quiver is that the arrows are out of the way. You have complete freedom of movement in front of you and you won't bump into things. This is a consideration for things like crowded shooting lines and of course the field. If you're in the woods, you don't want your arrows snagging against uh, branches or saplings and so on. So having the arrows positioned behind you means that these won't catch on to anything. And despite its appearance, it's not that hard to use. You reach back, pull an arrow out, and you're ready to knock. There actually aren't that many disadvantages which I can really pick on. If there's anything that might dissuade you from getting a field quiver, is that it might be a bit too weird for you. You might simply be used to having the arrows in front and reaching behind to grab arrows may feel a little counterintuitive. Additionally, if you're the kind of archer who needs to see the arrow before you use it, this is a little more awkward. You can still see the arrow, but you have to look behind you or swing the quiver around to sight the arrows you have left in your quiver. Otherwise, the main reason why people use this is to keep the arrows out of the way. Obviously, the name Field Quiver suggests that it's more popular for field style archers, but even on a target shooting line, this is still a, a very popular choice, mostly because it keeps the arrows out of the way, and many archers prefer that even in regular target shooting. So which style you get depends mostly on the function and the purpose. If you are going stumping in the woods, then you probably don't want to carry a hip quiver because that, that will catch on to things, it's clumsy and loud. But if you're shooting in a competition, the back quiver might be too awkward and tiring to use. In the end, it's based on what feels most comfortable for you. As far as price difference goes, the main difference is in the quality of the construction and several other features. The bottom end, the entry level quivers, the ones which cost $20 or come with the beginner archery kits, are normally just several plastic tubes in a canvas bag with a metal belt clip. These are good enough but they're often just there to clip on your belt and they flop around really easily and they can spill the arrows uh, in a bad wind. So they're fine for starting out, but they're cheap because there's really nothing more than just the basic materials in a basic shape. The more expensive quivers generally are made from more durable materials so they won't rip or tear as easily and therefore they will last longer. They're generally more stable so they don't flop around on your hip or on your back and they normally contain more compartments. Additionally, they tend to be designed to be more stylish, whether it's the sport style target quivers or the traditional leather quivers that are made from better materials, with more handcrafting or better looks. So that's the appeal. So more expensive generally means more durability and more stability, but beyond a certain point, all quivers do the same thing. At the very highest end, you're basically looking at custom, handcrafted leather goods. So if that's the sort of thing you want, then go for it. I think that appearance would be a big factor in deciding which kind of quiver you want and how much you want to spend. I do generally recommend that you spend a decent amount on a quiver. The cheapest ones will carry you through for your first few lessons, but you might start getting a little frustrated, whereas getting a decent quiver will be something that will last you for years and you enjoy using. Anyway, this is New Sensei. Hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.